Center, and I'm a member of the MCC, Multicultural Center Advisory Board. So for all those roles, and certainly as um, an alum of this fine institution, and as a me current member of its community at large, I um, am compelled to come and also compelled to speak. And I think I'm most compelled to speak <clears throat> on my identity as a Caucasian male, because if you're, especially if you're Caucasian male and you're sitting in this room and you're asking yourself, what's the big deal? It was just a party. Or maybe you're a member of that fraternity and you came here thinking today you might defend what your position was, if only just to say, I was without malice, I had good intentions, I didn't mean to harm anyone. Then I would say to you, there are white males in the room who are grossly and egregiously offended, and we take exception to it because this incident, this infraction of our community values for the Mustang Way was offensive to us too. There is a special burden and responsibility that members of the dominant majority group bear, and that is indeed to speak out and to know better and thereby <coughs> do better. And so. I mainly wanted to speak today to offer to all of you in this room, if you, especially if you're one of my students, but if not, but especially if you are, and, or I should say even if not, and especially if you are Caucasian and male, and you're wondering why it's a big deal, and you're wondering what your role and responsibility is unique to your demographic, I want to talk to you please come find me. Again, my name is Brad Kiker. You spell that K-Y-K-E-R. My username for my email is B as in Brad Kiker at calpoly.edu. And I want to hear from you. Not to chastise you, not to you know, in any way threaten or offend your sensibilities about where you are in your own ethnic identity development and what your role and responsibility might be in a civil and um, a civil community where you might conduct yourself with integrity, but strictly to have a, a dialogue and to, for me to you know, possibly mentor you if that's what we both find to be amiable. But I believe that members of um, our Caucasian uh, male constituency, if you will, of our Mustang community need to speak out and need to voice the fact that we are certainly offended by these types of events. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, James Kelly. Wasn't expecting I was going to speak, but um, I felt um, compelled to say something. Um, I'm a fourth year English major. Um, the only real affiliation I have is I'm the treasurer of the Writers Collective. Um, but what I wanted to say in slight disagreement was that um, clearly because we are having this discussion, because this event happened, I don't think, and uh, um, forgive me for using the we statement, I don't think that I'm an adult and neither are the, the, is this campus and, and the, the student body because such an event happened because of the fact that we, as a student body, collectively were accepting and not recognizing the consequences of the words, choices, and the themes of parties. And this is oddly hypocritical for me to say because I never really usually speak about this, but just the, one of the un, unspoken issues is the consequences of free speech. It is that we have this great right but we never sometimes think deeply about whether or not what we say has a consequence. And so this, we see in some ways this demonstrative tacit ac accept, uh, accepting of using words to describe women, of using, uh, of creating this ridiculous theme of a party, thinking it is, inconse it is inconsequential when it is furthest from the truth that words can have an extreme effect. And so 
we are not adults, I think. We are not adults because such an event like this happened. We need to have a greater understanding and a greater maturity and recognize that there are consequences even when you do not have a malicious intent. Thank you. Um, so before our next speaker comes up, I just wanted to let people know we are aware of the time. We are able to remain in the room. For those of you who do need to, to leave early, um, certainly please do. Um, but we can continue for another half an hour. Um, for people who do have to leave, I just want to let you know that we are going to try our best to keep you informed of all of the follow-ups um, to this discussion. And you can always come to the cross-cultural centers or write us to get more information. <coughs> Okay, hello. So my name is Sarah Lamar. I am a member of the American Indian Stud um, Student Association. So it is kind of compelling to come up and say something when people are showing a lot of support. Um, so it's kind of nerve-wracking, but I just do want to say that um, so my grandmother is from Navajo descent, and she was raised as a slave in an Anglo-American white person's home. And it's very disheartening to come to a school that this happens. And we can't be ignorant to the fact that these cowboy and Indian parties happen, not just this last weekend. Every year, continuously, this isn't the first time, and this isn't the most recent, probably. But it is very disheartening to come to a school like that. And at first, I didn't want to be a face, and I didn't want to say, yeah, I have Navajo descent, because I don't want to be that you know, I don't want to be the person that people look at and say, oh, you're, you know, you're judging this person, or you're discriminating against. But I kind of felt compelled to just say that it feels disheartening to come to a school where that kind of stuff happens and people are in some, like parading around the streets and you know doing this in the community so people can see it. And so I was excited to come to this school. I am a transfer student. I'm a fourth year biology student. I was so excited to come here and graduate from here. And I just want to say now I'm not that excited, basically. But um, I do appreciate the efforts that are going forth and everyone's kind of like spreading awareness and I just wish that we continue to do that and realize that it's a very real thing that Native Americans are discriminated against just as much as a, you know, African American people, Jewish people. I mean, we went through the same thing, the same kind of genocide is exactly the same. We shouldn't downplay it, we shouldn't ignore it and it's here. Native Americans are here on campus. We're not, it's not like we're somewhere else. It's we're here. California has the greatest population of Native American people, about 800,000 in the whole United States. We have the greatest concentration of Native Americans living here in our state. We need to realize it. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Sam Holzer. Um, I uh, am speaking on behalf of myself personally. Um, as a Jewish student, um, I would be so horrifically offended if a fraternity or a sorority on campus had an event that was themed with a Nazi's Jew theme. And this is so disgustingly similar in terms of the genocidal implications, in terms of the sexist implications, and in this specific case, in terms of the racist implications. And I would think that really to discuss that idea of creating an inclusive uh, campus community of one that is really critical, we need to look at ourselves and see that this event has been on national headlines and see how Cal Poly is being represented within the national dialogue. Um, and that if we're going to gain a reputation for a racist and sexist institution, it is because we are complicit within that if we do not speak up and if we do not change something. 
So we need to have, as a, like, as a campus, really change the dynamics of what the discussion is on this campus. Whether that be um, a, a requirement within our GECs that is an ethnic studies class, whether that be, I believe it's Psych 303 that is an interpersonal dialogues class um, that really examines how we interact with each other on campus. We need to have requirements that really create a community of inclusivity and a community that thinks critically about our own actions. I'd like to say personally that Dr. Origi's modern political economy class that I took my fall quarter has deeply shaped my core beliefs about neocolonialism um, as well as a variety of other topics. And I don't believe I personally would be the same person if I did not have that requirement as a history major. And I believe that because my own personal beliefs were so radically changed and so much more inclusive as a result, that that should be a requirement for all first year students. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Merrick Ribby and I'm a second year English major. Um, I just wanted to say a quick thing about uh, free, free speech and free exchange of ideas because uh, throughout this past week I've seen that the main, uh, I guess, uh, flack that, this, that people that have been upset at this have been getting is that what about free speech? What about free exchange of ideas? And um, I just wanted to kind of talk really quickly about free, free speech and free exchange of ideas on this campus. So when there's a situation when there's such a large mi majority and such a large minority, I'm speaking, racially, I'm speaking racially. If I'm in a group of 30 people and I'm the only person of color in that group and someone says something racist and I say, hey, that's racist, I don't have a voice. You know, um, I, because I'm such a small minority, and when you do these kind of things and defend it under the guise of free speech, it just relegates these minorities further. And people that already don't have a voice are now even more scared to speak their mind and to have a voice. So when you talk about free speech and free exchange of ideas with an event like this, it doesn't become free speech and free exchange of ideas. It actually hurts free speech and free exchange of ideas. What it really becomes is an excuse for someone that doesn't want to think about other people to be able to say whatever they want without thinking of the consequences. Yeah, so. My name is Sophia Robles, and I just come here as a student and as a human to unfortunately say that I've never felt like a minority as an oppressed other until I've come to this school, and especially strange coming from an upper middle class private high school as well. I never felt like an outsider until I come here. But saying that, I have not lost hope. Seeing the people that are still in this room today, despite the people that have left to go wherever they need to go, go on with their lives, maybe they just had class, I'm not trying to judge that. but. I still feel that the people here are the ones that can make the change and can continue the support. So I've never been one to speak up about anything like this, but now I feel compelled to and it's something that I guess I am now becoming passionate about. So I'm just coming here to hopefully ask for the support and compel others to speak out and continue the change. But we are the ones that can do so. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alex Thomas. I'm a third year civil engineering major uh, here at Cal Poly, and I'm also an active member in Greek life. And I don't have anything really profound to say um, or anything like that, but just that as a member of Greek life and as a white male, that I am not okay with the things that go on. I'm not okay with the racism and the objectification of women with these social norms that contribute to it. And I want to stand up here as an ally and say that for anyone that does feel ostracized, for anyone that feels like they don't have a voice, I am working very hard um, to be an ally for everyone. I want to stand as an ally and be known as that. Um, I'm, like I said, as an active member in the Greek system, I'm working very hard to change some of this culture and trying very hard to change, make that change and be the change. And as such, I don't have anything really profound to offer other than the fact that I'm available and I want to be speaking out against these things. Uh, again, coming as a white male, a member of a fraternity. Um, yeah, if you guys have anything. Again, my name is Alex Thomas. I also work for Safer, um, dean of student, part of the Dean of Students. So please come and find me and speak with me. Thank you. My name is Hannah Poplack, and I'm a first year student. And as a representative for Girl United, which is a national women's empowerment organization, I really feel compelled to speak about the sexism that took place at this event this last weekend. I know that this forum has really touched on 
um, the racist aspects that happened, which I think are incredibly important. But I think that as a university, an educated university, a top university in the country, our women deserve more and our men deserve more. And I think that there's a fundamental difference in what happened last weekend versus parties in general, which is that the party that happened last weekend was sponsored by a fraternity and sorority organization that's sponsored by the university. Um, and I think that there's a big difference there. Um, you know, students talk about, you know, you can dress with whichever way you want. Um, if you have a party with your friends, you know, you can pick the theme. There's free speech there, and that's true. But the party that happened was sponsored by a group that was brought onto campus in order to better our students. It's supposed to be a group of leaders. It's supposed to be a group of people that are really going to um, enhance our campus community. And I am a member of Greek life. Um, but I hope that moving forward that the Greek system takes this as an opportunity to really better our system. And not just to better our system, but to really hope for more for the women and men in the fraternity system and the Panhellenic system. Because I think as women, we deserve more than to be subjected to parties which are objectifying women. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Terry Jones. I'm the chair of the social sciences department here at, uh, at Cal Poly. And um, typically in the classroom, I don't let emotions overwhelm me. But this week, um, I've felt personally and professionally as an educator, and especially as a member of the Cal Poly community, uh, I felt utterly humiliated, um, depressed. I feel that uh, as an educator, especially who touches on topics of Native American history and culture in my classes, that somehow I've, I've failed. I failed professionally. Um, personally, um, I'm a third generation educator. And my grandfather was a high school teacher and he was a racist. And I always felt a certain amount of satisfaction in, in, in my family to know that, that, well, we've made progress, at least in my family. My, myself and my siblings feel that we've left that behind us. But when events like this take place, um, I, I just found, find it uh, tremendously uh, depressing and, and humiliating. And uh, the, the last thing I'd like to say is, on behalf of Cal Poly, um, I'd like to apologize to the uh, local Native American and local African American communities. I, we have to do a better job, and, and um, I'm one of those people that I think that, that has to do that. So thank you for letting me speak. Hi, my name is Austin McLagan, and I don't really have any ties to this issue on our campus. But as an ordinary student, I'd just like to make a call to action to anyone who works for our university, anyone in IFC, and anyone in ASI. I'd like to make a call that today we have pressure around this issue. We have hundreds of students gathered here today. But I hope that we remember that the pressure does not go away after this, that the pressure is always on to speak out about this issue. It's important that we remember that going out as the leaders of our campus. And I'm also, I'm going to assume right now that the people who are still here are people who truly care. The students that are here after an hour and 15 minutes are the students who do care about this issue and care about making a difference. So I want to make a call to action to all of us as well that we break the silence, even when we're just with our friends, even when we're not at a forum like this and the pressure is not on and it's not the popular thing to do. I hope that we can remember to break the silence and speak out and not let little jokes or remarks go by. Thank you. Sorry. Um, hi, my name is Brianti. Um, I really, I kind of wish I came up here earlier while more people were here, but one of the one of the main problems I think that we have here with this issue, especially regarding the gender aspects of it, is that people don't take it seriously. You know, we use these kind of themes in our parties. We call each other these terms. We call each other what hoes, bitches, you know, all of these things. And we say, oh, it's okay. Like, I'm just joking. It's not serious. My question to you is, what is it going to take for it to be serious to you? You're going to these parties, you know, especially for addressing the ladies. You're going to these parties um, and accepting this 
this persona that's being projected onto you as a whole. And I want you to ask yourself, is that really how you want to look in any circumstance, whether it's a joke or whether it's serious? And you're thinking, oh, it's okay, you know, it's just, it's just a party theme, but when does it go beyond being a party theme and being how you are being represented as a person, as a human being in this world and on this campus? That's my question. Hi, my name is, can I take this off? Hi, my name is Julia Kanata. I'm actually super nervous to be here, but I think it's really important to really address that the issues that minorities face keep on reoccurring and it's really sad and we really need to be aware of these issues and I feel like we're speaking to the choir here and everyone knows of these issues, but specifically in this event, I think it's really important that something more is done, either an email sent out to every single student explaining why this issue was bad, why this was bad. I think that's really important and also I came to this campus, I, even though I'm, I look white, I'm Spanish, Argentinian and I felt more of a minority coming to this campus because I don't feel like I belong really anywhere. I'm not with the white people, I'm not with people of color, but um, I really feel that diver diversity is really important and that's why I work in the Multicultural Center. I love my job every single day. I love being there, kind of love it more than doing homework or doing anything else. But um, I just wanted to say that it's really important for us to move forward and tomorrow for us to do something about this, not just talk about today. Either if we have an email sent out to every single student explaining specific, specifically why it's important, making it a requirement for us to understand the issues and the injustices that minorities keep on facing in society and this, how sad it is that a lot of minorities are in these cyclical problems forever, and, and not forever, but like it seems to be that it is recurring and reoccurring cyclical issues with minorities. And it's very sad, and it really hurts me that this event happened, and um, that's all I have to say. Hi, my name is Gabriel Meyer. Um, I'm a member of the Child Development uh, Department. I'm graduating in June as well. Um, part of my coursework involved uh, taking, um, you know, some some psychology. I get a psych minor with my degree, and and uh, you know, part of the support courses involved, uh, you know, taking some psychology courses that, you know, fall in the human ethics category. I took Jennifer Pedrotti's um, uh, multicultural psychology course. Forgive me for stumbling over my words, um, but I'm, genu I'm genuinely uh, impressed with the, the turnout and the, the things that have been said today. Um, she was unable to be here today, and I, I get to talk to her in passing. And uh, you know, I told her I'd, I'd be able to let her know how things went. And uh, as a community, um, Cal Poly is a school. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to, to come together and discuss something as important as this. Um, I'd like to say that where, when it comes down to the accountability is going to fall on individuals um, and, and holding ourselves accountable first. You know, the school we can hope, and I, and I have faith that, you know, Cal Poly, is, uh, their administration is, is taking, I know they're taking this matter seriously and, and they're um, going to move forward on it. But as the gentleman mentioned earlier, you know, six months from now, really what it comes down to is what we do as individuals. Um, uh, People have mentioned being allies to all, all of the communities that have been disadvantaged. Um, that includes LGBT, that includes, you know, it, it, it's just, it, it falls on each and every one of us to speak up in these types of situations. So, once again, um, thank you for hearing me out, and, and I can't agree more with the sentiments that have been expressed today. Thank you. Additional people who wanted to come up to the microphone. I know everyone already heard me once, so I'll say something real quick. I agree that there's very much uh, an individual aspect. I'm pretty sure everyone here is probably really gung ho on, yeah, let's tackle this problem. Let's be really multicultural and very like, culturally fluent. But I also think that there needs to be specific actions taken by the leadership of this institution. From the very high ups, I hate to say it, but I've noticed that 
even our president is not here today or our vice president for whatever reasons, I don't mean to judge, but we need action taken by our biggest leaders and I thank you very much for the apology that you uh, related on behalf of IFC Public Affairs. But as students, I feel like it would be most satisfying to see some sort of collaboration between our organizations in order to make progress, to make this not an issue anymore, whether that be uh, cultural competency courses for our fraternities and sororities, or for our clubs, or for students in general. Something needs to be done, something tangible, that students can see that there's progress being made. And so my call is to the administration of this school to do something about this issue, and not just let the students figure it out for themselves. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Ingrid. Um, I have a lot of thoughts that have been going on through my mind this week. And it's hard to really say it all here, but I'm just gonna speak from my heart. Um, finding out about this event, it really made me relive a lot of the painful memories that I've gone through here at Cal Poly. Even in, even in classes that there's been a lot of talk about education and having requirements for ethnic studies and race and class relations, but I've taken a political science class and, you know, during, I think it was one of the first classes, we, we had an exercise where we kind of had to talk about, I think we were asked questions about, you know, like what um, racial group or ethnicity or, um, class status you come from and stuff like that and so you're really forced to see the differences right and I really stood out in that class because I think I was one out of like four people of color and then also like the majority was upper middle class and um, like high class people and I come from a working class family and I was just outed and that was you know the first class in a 10 week course and that really made me feel intimidated. And, and I felt like during the whole class, I couldn't really speak out. Um, it was fearful. I'm, I'm still feeling that here today. Um, I'm recently going through a loss of a friendship. Um, I was best friends with this white girl. And, um, but, I don't know, we've been, I feel like she felt a lot of white guilt, um, like, like she felt like she was exposed to these issues in ethnic studies and stuff like that, white privilege, and started thinking and uh, reflecting upon that and felt like she needed to do something but didn't really quite know how to do that and I think that she wanted to do that by getting to know me and getting to know my stories and stuff like that but lately the more I think about it the more I feel objectified like I was being studied and and it's not a good feeling so I know there's a lot of people here that care and and you know want to be allies but one thing that I want to say about allyship is that you know, as people of color, we, we experience these things and we have no choice, you know, like we can't escape our, we, out of our bodies. Um, with allyship, it's a title that you place onto yourself and you can like choose to be an ally today and not tomorrow. Um, and so really when it comes to understanding white privilege, I feel like it really, just based on this experience that I had with this friend of mine that I was really close to, um, you know, really take it upon yourselves um, to educate yourselves. You guys are at a university. There's so many resources, so many um, books um, and articles to read on these topics. Um, 
There's blogs you could follow. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Black Girl Dangerous, but that's personally one of my favorite blogs. And she has, she wrote a blog about no more allies. And so if I could recommend something here to you all today is to maybe read that um, article, No More Allies by Mia McKenzie. Um, check out the blog. Um, yesterday, uh, the American Indian Student Association Club had a film screening and you know I know we're all busy and stuff like that but if you really do consider yourself an ally and want to stand in solidarity you need to you know show up to these events and continue educating yourself because even if you're not an ethnic studies history political science major um, I personally am an environmental management and protection major so I'm in the College of Ag and when somebody earlier asked the um, faculty to stand up, I did not see one person from my department. And that, you know, says a lot to me because in the College of Ag, I feel like it, it's even less, it's even more unsafe. Um, at least that's how I feel. There was, a, I took a class once where we had to do an environmental impact um, kind of analysis on on the Standing Rock um, Indian Reservation, and it was this man that wanted to put forward a project, and we had to look at the um, at the impacts of it, but we didn't even study what kind of cultural or social impacts would be. Um, made on the indigenous community that lives there. And I, the professor that I had in that class is a, you know, old, I mean, I think he's retired now, like white man. And he didn't have the knowledge of, you know, what indigenous communities go through or anything like that. And if, you know, I, I care deeply about um, the environment and as do you know native peoples and how are we supposed to um you know at like my department specifically um address these issues and say you know we're protecting the environment or addressing these issues when we don't look at it from you know a well-rounded point of view um so I've said a lot of things today. I'm sorry I'm taking so long. But the main thing that I, um, I guess since we're talking about moving forward as an individual, definitely educate yourselves, attend these events. And then also for the institution and specifically, um, yeah, it doesn't matter what your major is. And I like that somebody, a professor in um, the biology department talked about that, that you know we, have that responsibility to talk about that in all of our classes um, because this is this affects our community as a whole. Thank you. So as we wrap up today, um, I'll do a little plug to let you know what we do at the Cross Cultural Centers that. We are that outlet on campus where students can come and we can help you to be advocates for yourself, but we also hope that we're taking the proactive approach in advocating for you, that as a part of the university, we hope that you don't always have to be the person who is taking that role of defending yourself or your culture or your identity. We want you to come in and talk to us will know what's going on and we will take a role in um, being active and helping to create that change. Um, even though the president and the vice president weren't able to be here today, they were very much interested in being here and knowing that the university was having this forum. They want to know everything that happened and we'll be sharing um, all of what um, was recorded, all of what was um, listed in our text messaging and we will be ensuring that, that steps um, that the university has taken are communicated to you. So uh, if you could feel comfortable following us on Twitter, the Cross Cultural Centers, or finding us on Facebook, um, we are able to share something with you. We will share something with you. 
I do know we've had um, multiple faculty members come to the cross-cultural centers and say that they would like to continue these conversations to help sponsor events that continue this and do that within their own classrooms. So I do know that um, that will be something that people will concretely be doing. Um, for those of you who do want to approach any of our speakers today, we'll be up here for a little bit longer. Uh, for anybody who wants to come into the cross-cultural centers, I'll tell you, um, I'm not the only staff person in there. Um, you'll see a lot of our other staff people at events. I'm going to ask them to stand up. I know they're at the, the far backs of the rooms. Um, we have Quay Dang, who works specifically with our multicultural center, Tammy Velasquez, who works with our gender equity center, and then in the back corner over there, we have Adam Serafin, who works with our Pride Center. So you can certainly be in touch with any of us or any of our student assistants. I know some of them have, have spoken today. And communicate to us what you want to make sure the administration knows, and we will make sure that they get that message. Thank you.